have a product rule for logarithms. So when you have the log of a product of two numbers, two variables, whatever it may be, sometimes it is helpful to expand that, to break it apart, kind of like when you're simplifying radicals. It was helpful to split the numbers apart so that you could simplify them. Same thing happens here. Sometimes it's helpful to split that number apart so you can simplify it. More often than not, though, it's going the other way. If you are adding two logarithms together, you can combine it into a single logarithm and multiply the two numbers, the two variables, whatever it may be. You can combine them and multiply. Similarly, we have a quotient rule. So if you're subtracting two logarithms, you can make it a single logarithm and you divide, or vice versa, you could expand it. Um, and then the power rule, you have a number or a variable or something raised to a power within a logarithm, you can take that power and make it a coefficient. Or vice versa, if you have a coefficient in front of a logarithm, you can move it up to become a power. Now, there are mathematical reasons why these work. But we're not going to go through deriving them. I just need you to take this by faith. Yes? What does the R and S stand for? Are they just R and S are, well, they can be constants, they can be variables, they can be anything. Okay? Uh, now, C, C is a constant. Uh -huh. It has to be a number. But R and S could be numbers, they could be variables, they, they could be a, a number of things there. Okay? All of these rules work for the natural logarithm. Just the exact same way, it's just the natural log is greater than common log or log base 2. Okay? Uh, it doesn't come up very often, but they do have to have the same base. They do have to have the same base to be able to combine them. Uh, just like you got to have the same variable to add, like 2x plus 3x, you can't add 2x plus 3y. It's got to be 2x plus 3x to be able to combine those. Or when you're adding or subtracting square roots, they have to have the same number as a square root. Logarithms, they have to have the same base. So let's use this. Um, there in your textbook, uh, if you flip back a couple pages, on page 311, there's an exploration, and I want you to walk through that. Now, let me kind of show you what they're doing here. Okay? Um, on, let's see here, I think this may be the first one, the last thing that we do. Oh, no, this is, uh, this is number four. This is what they're asking you to do. They want you to use, um, they, they give you three values for logarithms, log of two, log of four, and log of eight. They give you those three values there on the left side of the paper. Then they want you to evaluate just using those properties, doing it without a calculator. Um, so, for example, when we get to number four, they want you to evaluate the log of five only using what they gave you. So you would express five, is 10 divided by 2. Now I know that they did not give me 2. The reason, or they did not give me 10. They gave me a log of 2, but not a log of 10. But remember back to yesterday, if this is the common log, the log of 10 is 1. You should know that without having to calculate with your calculator. So then you have enough information to figure out that the log of 5 is 0 6, 9, 8, 9, 7. Oh yes, if you just plug in the log of 5, it's going to give you that value. But this exercise is going to need to use these properties and just those three values and stuff like that uh, to be able to evaluate these. Okay, so I did number four for you. Example one says expand the following logarithms. Okay, so if we have the log of eight times x, y to the fourth, then that's the log of a product. We can expand that into the log of eight plus the log of x plus the log of y to the fourth. And then if we're expanding, that also means we don't want to have exponents. So we can take this one step further. Okay, I'm not going to evaluate the log of 8. I'm just going to leave that in that form. But I am going to use my power rule to bring down that power of 4 in front of the, the final logarithm. Okay, that fourth power is only on the log. It's not on the whole thing. 
it's only on the y. So this is equivalent to the original. Okay, that's a scale. Let's look at example B. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, couple of different things going on here. First thing that's going on is that this is a quotient. So we're going to start with that. This one's a natural log, but that's okay. Nothing changes, bless you. Quotient becomes a difference. We've got the natural log of the square root of x squared plus 5 minus the natural log of x. There's still more we can do because we can express the square root as an exponent. We can rewrite that as x squared plus 5 to the 1 half. Now, because that's x squared plus 5, we cannot apply the 1 half to the x squared and to the 5. But what we can do is we can use our power rule to rewrite that as 1 half natural log of x squared plus 5. And make sure you put x squared plus 5 in parentheses so that it is clear that um, the plus 5 goes with the logarithm. It's not just outside of the logarithm. Yes. Because of the plus. Because of the plus. Yes. Okay. Let's look at it in terms of numbers because I have a lot of reason. Sometimes my calculus kids will do this. Okay. Uh, what if we had 3 plus 6 to the 1 half? Okay. If we were doing what y'all were just asking me about, then that would be the square root of 3 plus the square root of 6. Square root of 3 is not a whole number, the square root of 6 is not a whole number. But if we add 3 and 6 and raise that to the 1 half, the square root of 9 is 3. 3 is not equal to the square root of 3 plus the square root of 6, I promise you that. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's not equal to 3. Okay, that's why you can't do that, um, because of the plus. Okay, so please, please, please remember that. And another thing that lots of people like to do, yes, I almost did that, um, is right here with x squared plus 5, okay, you cannot do anything when the sum is within the logarithm. Okay, the only time you can expand or can this is when, when it's um, the natural log of x squared plus the natural log of 5. Okay, so if you've got the sum within 3, you can't do that. Okay, that's as far as this one will go. Yes. That would have been the same thing as distributing the one half power. Well, anytime you have exponents, though, with, with logarithms, we move those to become coefficients. Yes, you raise it to the one, you raise it to the one half over here, but we move that exponent to there. Is that what you're asking? <laughs> Okay, let's look at condensing. Let's look at condensing. We want to make this a single logarithm. We want to make these expressions a single logarithm. So with the first one, that coefficient, flip the paper over. Yeah, there you go. That coefficient becomes an exponent by our power rule. Okay, when you're condensing, any coefficient in front has got to become a power. We will start by combining those logarithms that are in parentheses there. When you're adding two logs, that condenses into a product.
Next step, we move that coefficient. It becomes a power. And I'm going to go ahead and apply it to both terms while I'm at it. You can, but we're, we're going to end up needing to do that because there's going to be some simplifying that we can do with the problem. You could just write that as x times y in parentheses squared. But looking ahead, I'm, I know that I'm going to need to distribute that, that power, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. All right, when we're subtracting two logarithms, that becomes a single logarithm of a quotient. The first number goes on top. The second terms go on the bottom. So we've got the natural log of x to the fifth over x squared y squared. And we can simplify because we've got x in the top and in the bottom. 5 minus 2 is 3. If it was bigger on the top, that's going to be x cubed over y squared. Let's look at example B, 1 half log of x plus the log of the square root of x minus 3 log of x. There are actually two ways that we can approach this problem. Because we've got some like terms here. We've got the log of x as the first term and as the last term. So technically, we could start by combining those. Okay, we can't um, in terms of their coefficients. Okay, we could do 1 half minus 3 because they are the exact same log expression. They just have different coefficients. Okay, so 1 half minus 3 is negative uh, 5 halves. And while I'm at it, I'm going to rewrite the log of the square root of x as the log of x to the 1 half. Because I'm going to need to use that here in a second. Now, the um, coefficients. Okay, we can't have coefficients when we combine logarithms, so we've got to use our power rule to move that coefficient of negative 5 halves. That's the log of x to the negative 5 halves plus the log of x to the 1 half. When you're adding, we multiply. So that becomes the log of x to the negative 5 halves times x to the 1 half. Properties of exponents. When you're multiplying like bases, what do you do with the exponents? Add them. Add them. So negative 5 halves plus 1 half is negative 4 halves, which is negative 2. And we don't need negative exponents. That's the log of 1 over x squared. <coughs> now, there are several different ways that you could have come up with this answer. Yes? You add, when you multiply like bases, you add their exponents. Negative 5 halves plus 1 half is negative 4 halves. Negative 4 divided by 2 is uh, negative 2. Okay. Um, now, you could have also written this, it depends, your answer choice, another way of writing the log of x to the negative 2 would be negative 2 log of x. Now, I know these two expressions don't really look a whole lot like each other, but they are equivalent. Pick a number for x. Somebody give me a number for x. I don't care what it is. This one's 5. Okay, I heard 5 first. Let's check that. The log of... 1 over 5 squared is this. Let's see if negative 2 log of 5 is the exact same value. It is. Okay. So those two are 